Hey guys, it's Shay. Welcome back to my channel. I have a great video for you today. Before we get started today, I want to make sure that you take this time out to go ahead and subscribe. Not only that, click the bell so that you know when I have new videos uploaded ready for you to view. Now, I'm super excited about this new series that I'm doing and I hope that you'll enjoy it too. As beauty professionals, there's so much that goes into what we do and oftentimes the most important aspects of what we do doesn't get the credit that it deserves. So today we're gonna to take a deep dive into a few personal development aspects of the industry that you must know, master, and become extremely comfortable with in order to be a successful beauty industry professional. I'm gonna focus on four core things today. And of course I have my little card, just a few notes on here <laughs> that'll keep me, for the most part, in line, online, and on time. I don't wanna to go too far. I know that you guys have plenty of things to do and I don't wanna keep you distracted. So if one of the things that I wanna really talk to you about in terms of being extremely important to your career, being a beauty industry professional, and that is your emotional stability. I know that that is taking in a lot right there. I know that that's a big mouthful for some of us, but it's really important to remember that as a beauty industry professional, we're dealing with people from all over the place. We're dealing with people from all kinds of backgrounds, all socio backgrounds, all economical backgrounds. We're dealing with different people. We have to make sure that when it comes to the personal realm that we have all these things in check so that when it comes to the professional realm we're good to go and one of the things that really affects you probably without you even noticing it is your emotional stability now you'll notice that when you are feeling good you're feeling positive everything's going right in your life it's easier to stay focused on these tasks when it comes to your business but if you have a little bit of upheaval over here, something's going on over there, it's a little harder to stay on task, to stay on time, to stay prioritized, and to stay in line with what you have for your beauty industry business. But it's very important for you to be able to make sure that you're functioning on all levels. So this means that on a personal level, in your personal life, you have to make sure that everything is in line to the best of your ability. Because especially if you're an independent beauty industry professional, it's going to be really, really hard if you find yourself in a tough spot emotionally to be able to fully carry out your task as a professional. And it's really important that if we're not feeling well, that we be vocal about it, at least to ourselves. Because there's no way that we can take care of other people effectively, at least for a consistent period of time, without taking care of ourselves. So we want to make sure that our emotional stability is something that we are paying attention to as beauty industry professionals. And again, I know it's nothing that sexy, it's nothing that everyone wants to talk about, it's not a, a hot ticket item right now, but the truth of the matter is, you are not separate from your business. But you have to, in your mind, prioritize. But if you're spent, if you're over, if you're dr drained personally in your personal life, if you're unstable emotionally in your personal life, chances are that you're not going to be able to function that much better in your professional life. So we have to be honest about this thing. A lot of times... We try to figure out why our business is not growing, why we're not being as fruitful as we wished or as we hoped for. But we have to understand that these two things are connected. If we're not taking care of ourselves personally, if we're not making sure that everything is in line, if we're not doing everything to the best of our ability on a personal realm, when it comes to our business side of things, things can follow suit. So we want to make sure that you're just aware of this. I'm not going to tell you how to fix it. I'm not going to tell you what's best for you, what doesn't work for you. I'm not even going to go, to the, go into all that. What I want to do right now is to make sure that you just understand and you keep on the top of your mind that your emotional stability is important. You have to ask yourself every day when you're going to work, especially if you're working for yourself as an entrepreneur, as a beauty professional, you have to ask yourself, 
How am I feeling today? How are things going today? You have to ask yourself if you are competent to make sure that the communications that you have between your client stays professional, stays on the business side of things and not the personal, emotional, or the ego side of things. Because it's very easy as beauty professionals, if we're working for ourselves, it's very, very easy to take something that a client or potential client um, says personally. But if you can remember, if you're working for someone else, right? Let's say that you have a nine to five job or a main job that you work, that you work and your beauty industry profession is second to that, or it's your hustle, your side hustle, you're trying to figure that out as you go. Let's say that someone disrespects you on your nine to five job, or they say something that is not so nice, or they are critical, and you have to figure out how to deal with it. Nine times out of 10, if you're working in the situation that nine to five or um, corporate or whatever, you're going to figure out a way to diffuse the situation. You're going to figure out a way to to address it and fix it without your ego getting involved. Because in your mind, this is not my business. This is someone else's business. Um, we'll figure it out. The nature of the beauty industry is that we're creatives and the services that we provide are based on creative services. So if someone says that they're unhappy with their service, if they tell us that we weren't um, up to standard, if they tell us that we weren't as open with how things were going to go um, with them, we tend to take that personally when we own those businesses. We tend to take that personally when it's us that is behind the scenes controlling, controlling the strings. Why is it that when it's our own business, if, if someone talks to us a certain way or if someone tells us that they're unhappy with something, we take it extremely personal. But if we're working a nine to five and someone is happy, unhappy with something, we don't take it personal at all. We have to make sure that we're able to detach to a degree as a beauty professional from complaints, from um, things that aren't so nice, and from client and customer feedback. So we're not ego driven, and that's really important. So I want to get off that and go to the next subject because we'll go, we can talk about that all day. Having a pleasing tone is very important to have in your arsenal as far as being a successful beauty professional because it says that you are thinking of the other person. At all times, no matter what you're saying, people are paying attention to you. And people are paying attention to how you say it. If you're yelling, if you're screaming about things, most people are going to turn off. It doesn't matter if you're right. It doesn't matter if everything you says is 100%. If you're screaming, if you're upset, if you are saying things in a way that's, uh, that, says, that, that feels condescending, people are going to tap out and tune up. They're not going to pay you any attention because no one wants to be ridiculed. No one wants to be um, made to feel uncomfortable. No one wants to feel ostracized. Um, and for those that do want to feel those things, we have other services for that, but that's not for us. Anyway, <laughs> but most people don't want to feel embarrassed by getting a service from you. Most people don't want to feel embarrassed because they need something from you. So you want to make sure that when we're speaking to people, when we're communicating with them, when we're explaining our services, even if they've, they've done something wrong or they've read something wrong, we want to make sure that we handle them with kids' gloves. It's okay, baby. This is, you know, don't worry about it. I understand. I'm going to walk you through. I'll give you all the information. Don't you worry. You have to take a step back and understand that people are looking at you as a means to get done what they want to get done. They're not necessarily looking at you as a friend. They're not necessarily looking at you as um, even a person on certain occasions, right? They come to you, and in their head, you are the business. So you have to make sure that you, again, are speaking to them in a way that is firm, it's direct, but also is comforting, 
is understanding and it's gently guiding them along the path that they should take while they are there. No one wants to make no one wants to be made to feel stupid, right? So you want to make sure that you're understanding of the tone that you're using. You want to make sure that you use a pleasing tone when speaking to your clients and especially when redirecting clients or when correcting them. So another thing that is really important uh, for you guys as far as your personal development as a beauty industry professional is the ability to be receptive. And this is important because sometimes we're so focused on what we want to do that we're not paying attention to anything else and we're not even listening, let alone receiving what someone else has to say. And this is very important because, again, you have to understand that the client is paying you their money. They are, to a degree, the boss. They're in charge. They want a service. You can provide that service. They're going to give you money for it. That's it. That's, that's just it. So you have to, again, remove that ego, take yourself aside, and say, listen, whatever they say to me, they're not saying it to me as a person. They're saying it to me as it relates to my business. And this is really important. And it's really important for us to be confident in ourselves. It's, it's very important for us to have high levels of self-esteem as beauty industry professionals because, because of the very nature of us dealing with people on such intimate levels. If you have a few people telling you that they're not happy with something or they're even, for some people, the fact that people are even questioning them about things makes them uncomfortable. And that's a really bad spot to be in. Because right now, if you look around, the entire economy of the world is changing. Most of things are going online and the things that aren't going online are typically service-based. As beauty professionals, we serve people. We're in the service industry. So if you don't make it your priority to be receptive and open to speaking with people and to speaking with them in a pleasant tone and to be emotionally responsible and handle them, handle them with a certain level of care, you're not going to last. And... It's not, it's, this is on my list, but it's not really a, a point separate from the others. But effective communication skills is another thing that we really, really need. And if we need to read books on effective communication, if we need to Google the definition of effective communication, which, by the way, means that you're able to articulate a point so that someone effectively understands it, it doesn't matter if you type it, text it, voiced it, um, send it by stool pigeons or carrier, carrier pigeons or you mime it or whatever. If you can effectively communicate information to someone else and they can receive it, you have effective communication. But it's just, it's not that easy. One, you have to be willing to listen to what the other person is saying. You have to be willing to listen to what you're saying and you have to be willing to express your thoughts and your feelings, which is another issue that some of us have in our personal lives that can translate and transition over into our personal life that can be detrimental. If you have issues communicating effectively in your personal life, your business will suffer because to a degree you are your business. And how can you be able to effectively communicate in your business if you're incapable of communicating effectively personal life? It's not going to happen. So it's very, very important that you guys understand the professional development aspect of being beauty industry professionals because it's not just about putting your product online. It's not just about doing a service. It's not just about getting your license. It's not just about building a brand. You have to make sure that you can confidently, diligently, and effectively communicate 
your goals and your promises to these people and actively give them that. So again, you have to make sure that you're emotionally stable and that you have the wherewithal to, to every day that you're working. Ask yourself for real, am I emotionally stable enough to handle what they need from me today? You want to make sure that no matter what's going on, even if your whole world is crumbling down personally, on the professional side, can I provide these people with information in a pleasing tone? Can I separate my personal life from my business life? This is very important. Are you able to be receptive is number three. Can you receive what someone else is saying, even and especially if they have a different perspective than you do, if they have a different understanding? And especially if there's a standoff, you think this, they think that, but they're the customer and they're paying you. So how are you going to weigh that? You have to make sure that you are really asking yourself this. And again, effective communication skills. Can you effectively communicate with people when you're upset, when you're mad, when things don't seem to be going right, when you don't fully understand things? Can you look outside and seek outside resources to help you? Are you willing to admit if you don't know something? Are you willing to admit if you don't understand something? Are you willing to admit that we all communicate differently and we all receive information and feel things differently? This is really important. And it's a part of the predictable beauty industry behavioral system that I've created that works 100% of the time. These are a few things that you may not remember. One, because you didn't go to beauty school. You're self-taught, and that's fine. I'm going to take you to beauty school. I'm going to give you the gems. I'm going to give you the information. Maybe it's been so long that you don't remember. Maybe they didn't talk about this. But this is a real deal. I'm Jay Renee. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I really hope that you really have a firm grip on some of the things that you can do to help yourself as far as personal development in the beauty industry and that you understand that everything and your money and your potential and your success in this industry is not just limited on the ability for you to do a nail or a lash or a wig or a wax or a brow or whatever. There, there are also other things that you have to grow. You have to develop. And that's what we're doing. So go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll be here next time in a new video to drop some more gems, to give you some more information. And as always, if I can help you, I'm going to help you. Leave a comment here. If you disagree, if you have no idea what I was talking about, um, say so below. Let's debate. <laughs> Follow me on Instagram at Beauty Industry J. And if you have questions, that's the best way to reach me. Go ahead and send me a direct message to let me know what your questions are and I will help you. I think that's it. I love you guys. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.